Could this be the week to fade the public and win some big money in the NFL? You know, a couple months ago, the public went 4-2, and two, and then the next week they went 0-7. 7-0 and seven. Seven and fading the public back in week 7. Well, guess what? Public went 3-1 and one last week. They had a good week. Now there are seven public plays and opinions for week number 13. I'm going to give you all seven of those here, and let's see if the fade in the public wins big like it did a couple months ago when it went a perfect 7-0, and oh, fading the most public plays in the NFL. Hey, I'm Steve Merrill. Wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. I'm going to break down the seven most public sides for you in week 13 this Sunday, December the 3rd, coming up for you free in this video in just a moment. Quick reminder, we don't just blindly fade the public. Sometimes the public is right, and overall this season they are up a few games still, and last week uh, they went 3-1. and one. But as I mentioned, way back in week 6, the public had a 4-2 and two week. The following week they went 0-7. Oh Once again, fading them went 7-0 and oh back in week 7. And lo and behold, after a good week last week, the public is getting very aggressive this week, and there are seven games that qualify the biggest card of the season. Could we possibly have another big week fading the public? That is often how it works. I'll give you those games here in just a moment. Just a quick reminder, if you want my personal best bets for this Sunday Pro Football, you might want to pay attention. The last two Sundays, my best bets have gone 7-1 and one against the spread, including a perfect 6-0 and back-to-back 3-0 and sweeps on Sunday afternoon. In fact, that late touchdown by the Ravens last week is the only reason we didn't push that game. Otherwise, we'd be 7-0 and the last two Sundays. Instead, we're 7-1, and still an incredibly good record, and I love this NFL card this Sunday. Get my best bets right now, SteveMerrillWagerTalk.com. Daily package is 39 or you can do a 30-day all-sports, all-access, which gets basketball and football, college and pro basketball, college and pro football for the next 30 days and nights. That gets you basically through all the bowl games as well for just over $8 a day. 30-day specials available right now with a very special promo code, Merrill30. Go use it right now on my page, SteveMerrillWagerTalk.com. All right, let's get into the NFL Fade the Public video here for Week 13. I have four public sides for Sunday, also three additional opinions, including the Sunday night game and a public underdog as well. First, though, let's look at the four official plays. Uh, they go at 1 o'clock Eastern this Sunday. We'll go down in schedule order. L.A. Chargers. Chargers getting some public love, and it's not a surprise. In fact, one of the reasons the public is up a few games this year still is because they have faded basically the Patriots and the Panthers every single week, and they've made a lot of money doing so. We're going to talk about that Panther game in just a moment. Not a surprise. Uh, spoiler alert, they're fading the Panthers once again this week, but they're also fading the 2-9 and nine Patriots. who are not just 2-9 and nine straight up, but they're also 2-9 and nine against the point spread. They've been a huge money burner. And this is often how it works when you have a dynasty like the Patriots for several decades with Belichick and Brady, and they're not as good anymore. It does take the betting market sometimes to catch up. And, you know, last week the public cashed with the New York Giants as a public dog. I thought it was a good spot for the Patriots off their bye week against a bad New York Giants team. They still could not get any offense whatsoever. New England's now scored six points and seven points in their last two games, and they've scored 17 or less in five of the, or six of their last seven, rather. Really bad offense. Could we get a spark at quarterback? Mac Jones started again last week. Bailey Zapp relieved him. Um, there's some talk. The rookie, Michael McCombie, might even be in there this week. We don't know yet. As of Saturday morning when I'm doing this video, uh, the New England Patriots still have not announced their starting quarterback. Not sure it matters. I think this team has some serious offensive problems. And obviously, it's not a surprise. The uh, public is fading them with the L.A. Chargers. Now, the Chargers have one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. But once again, not sure the Patriots in this makeshift quarterback rotation can take advantage. And the uh, public is on the Chargers. Current line heading into this weekend, open four and a half. It's up to five and a half now as the public has pushed it higher. Another game at one o'clock Eastern is the Detroit Lions. Public is on the Lions in this game. Uh, open three, now a minus four point favorite on the road against the Saints. And you know, the theme this year, one of the reasons the public has done quite well in many weeks is because they fade bad teams. Like I said, the Patriots, 2-9 and nine against the spread. Uh, the Panthers, who we're going to talk about here coming up in a moment, uh, have only covered once all season against the spread. Yet this is one of the games this week in which we're actually fading a team that's a decent team, and that's the 5-6 and six Saints, who are still in the running uh, for the division there in that very weak NFC South. Lions, though, coming off that bad loss on Thanksgiving afternoon against the Packers is more than a touchdown home favorite. So I was a little surprised to see this one make the cut. I think it's, though, a little bit of a fate of the Saints, though, who have failed to cover five of their last six games against the spread, and they've gone just two and four straight up, one and five ATS during that span. So this is probably more of a fade of the Saints than necessarily the public back in the Lions. 
Although the Lions are somewhat of a high-profile team still. And uh, Jared Goff is still having a nice season. He had a 1-4 of four QB rating, no interceptions in that game against the Packers. That's another reason, surprising they lost as more than a touchdown home favorite. He actually didn't play that poorly, threw for over 330 yards. Um, Derek Carr also having a good season for the Saints, although he has regressed a little bit the last two games against the Falcons and Vikings. Uh, one interception, no touchdown thrown the past two games, and uh, mediocre 77 and 88 QB ratings. So we will have to see if he's able to bounce back. Uh, Lions defense is starting to show some chinks in the armor. Uh, they face some weak offensive opponents this year. And uh, once again, last week's opponent uh, Packers were a pretty weak offensive team. And Green Bay still managed to put up over 370 total yards. Saints, meanwhile, on the season, uh, very mediocre numbers on both sides of the ball. Uh, but they actually rate as a slightly better defensive team. And um, that could be the difference in this game. So I was a little surprised to see this one make the cut. But once again, the Lions are a four-point road favorite, and the public likes Detroit on Sunday. All right, let's keep it going here at 1 o'clock Eastern. Or actually, this is a 4 o'clock Eastern start. Let's jump ahead to the 4 o'clock game. Not sure why this is on the late card, but it is. And that's the uh, Carolina Panthers and Tampa Bay Bucks. And as I mentioned, the public continues to fade Carolina, just like they do with New England, and they continue to win doing so. Panthers are 1-10 straight up. Now 1-9 and nine and 1 against the spread. And uh, once again, they're actually 1-8-2. Uh, uh, they have pushed a couple games, depending on which line. But no matter how you look at it, uh, they've only covered once this year. And, of course, that was their only win as well against the Houston Texans, which came off their only bye week. Otherwise, Carolina has not won a single game this season. And they have not covered a single game except coming off the bye. Uh, so very difficult for me to make a case for Carolina. Uh, Tampa Bay, though, not exactly a great team either. They've lost six of their last seven straight up. Um, they have been a dog in six of those, uh, five of those last seven games. And now they have the uh, rare uh, situation of being more than a field goal favorite. In fact, they haven't been favored by more than a field goal in any of those past seven games. And now they're laying uh, five to five and a half at home. So it's a bit of a role reversal. Um, Baker Mayfield obviously having a better season than Bryce Young. Carolina's offense is the worst in the NFL. And they have absolutely no passing attack whatsoever. Now averaging 4.7 yards per pass. Tampa Bay has been a below average pass defense. Just not sure Carolina can take advantage. Uh, Tampa Bay has absolutely no run game. One of the worst rushing offenses in the league. And Carolina has been better against the pass this year than the rush. So from a matchup perspective, it's not terrible for Carolina because they have a good pass defense against a one-dimensional passing attack of Tampa Bay. Yes, the Panthers have been terrible offensively, but they're now taking on a very mediocre a below average, actually, Tampa Bay defense. So could this be the week Carolina finally gets a win and a cover? We'll find out. But the public is fading them once again. And uh, one of the main reasons the public is up about five games this year, above 500, is because fading the Panthers and the uh, Tampa Bay, uh, I'm sorry, fading the Panthers and the New England Patriots combined has gone now, what is it, 17-2-2 against the spread? <laughs> fading the Pats and the Panthers has gone, no, I'm sorry, 17-3-2 against the spread. So you can see why the public has done well overall this season. Just fading the Panthers and the Patriots has really been the difference. And they're fading them once again with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a 4 o'clock Eastern game. The other game at 4 o'clock Eastern also made the public cut. And that's the Miami Dolphins. Not a surprise here. Uh, the Washington, not my Washington Commanders, have been just horrendous over the last month. And this is a team that traded away both starting defensive ends at the end of October at the trade deadline with Sweat and Chase Young. And now it's showing. They've been just terrible defensively. In fact, they've gone over three straight and four of their last five games. Only game that stayed under, stayed under by a field goal, and that was New England. And keep in mind, that game had 37 points after the third quarter, and it still only stayed under by a field goal, no score in the fourth quarter. So the Redskins, pardon me, the Commanders, have no defense whatsoever, and it's showing. Problem is, they don't have much offense either. They've scored only 19. In fact, they've scored 20 or less now in three of their last four games. Uh, but three of those last three have all gone over because their defense has been so bad. And this is not a good team to be facing with a bad defense. The Miami Dolphins, uh, the most explosive offense in the NFL. And they faced three or four other really bad defensive teams this year. And they've averaged over 40 points a game, over eight yards per play, over 500 total yards. So it really is hard to see the commanders slowing the Dolphins down in this one. Uh, so not a surprise. Miami is a public side. You know, I mentioned the Cowboys on Thursday night on many videos on Wager Talk today earlier this week. I mentioned that the Cowboys in a six point six and a half point teaser were a good play because I thought they'd win the game straight up, but the inflated line of minus nine 
was a bit high. Well, it played out that way. They won by exactly six, so the teaser did make a difference, and that's exactly when you want to use teasers, when you think it'll make a difference. Um, I mentioned that you'd have to probably use a six and a half or seven pointer to get Dallas minus two and a half or less. And one team you might want to tie that up with is the Dolphins on Sunday. And Miami currently has nine and a half across the board. So, of course, you'd have to use a seven point teaser, but you could get the Dolphins down to minus two and a half in this game um, and get some in a basic straight up win situation. Uh, could the commander step up and play better? It's possible, but it's very hard to see them slowing down this potent Miami attack. So, not a surprise that the public is on the Miami Dolphins, minus nine and a half. All right, those are your four official public sides for week number 13 here on December the 3rd. Once again, recapping the four official public sides on the early card at 1 Eastern, uh, the Chargers, minus five and a half, and also the Detroit Lions, minus four. And on the late afternoon card Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, minus five and a half, and the Miami Dolphins, minus nine and a half. I'm going to give you three additional leans that were just a bit outside from making the cut here in a moment, including the Sunday night game, also a public dog, an additional public dog for you. But first, let me remind you, my NFL Sunday best bets have been incredible this season. In fact, the last three plus months, I'm number one on the NFL sides, going all the way back to the end of the preseason this year at wagertalk.com. And the past two years combined, college and pro football sides, number one ranked units one. I'm number one this year in 2023 in the NBA, up over 120 units going back to January 1st. In a couple of years, got a number one college basketball ranking. We're off to a great start in college hoops this year. What a great time of year to be an all-sports client. You're getting four major sports, college football, pro football, pro basketball, college basketball. And I've got special offer for you this week. I have a three-day sampler, 30-day or a 365-day all-sports all-access. You pick the one that works best for you, no matter which one you choose, you get an instant discount and you get every personal best bet I'm using every day and night. Once again, that 30-day sampler works out to just over $8 a day and it gets you basically through all the bowl games into January now. Or you can do that one-year special works out to just over $3 a day. Don't miss out. Crushing it in football, crushing it in basketball. It continues this weekend. Last two Sundays alone, my NFL best bets have gone 7-1 and one against the spread. And I love this NFL card on Sunday. College and pro basketball kicking it every day as well. And, of course, the college bowls are about to start. Check out those all-sports specials, including that 30-day promo code Merrill30. Use it right now on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. Don't forget daily free plays posted there as well, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's look on the way out here. Three additional uh, opinions for you. These games weren't quite strong enough to be official public plays. But the public is definitely leaning this way in all three games, so I wanted to mention them to you here on the way out. Uh, first one goes at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. Uh, public is backing the Pittsburgh Steelers at home against Arizona. Uh, look at line was as low as three. It's now six and a half, so substantially higher line than I expected. Uh, the public has pushed this one higher, to say the least, and they like Pittsburgh in this game against the 2-10 and 10 Arizona Cardinals, who are 6-6 six and six against the spread. Public's faded Arizona a lot this year, too, uh, with Knicks results, so... Cardinals, of course, started the season pretty strong ATS. Uh, they've gone just three and five ATS their last eight, despite going one and seven straight up. They have covered three of those eight. Uh, they've been a feisty underdog, and they, of course, have Kyler Murray back in the lineup. He came back three games ago, and uh, this is his fourth game back. Uh, he has a quarterback rating of 80, and he has thrown two touchdowns, two interceptions in three games. For very mediocre results so far uh, for one of the worst teams. Actually projected to be the worst team. Uh, coming into the season, I believe their season win total is as low as about four and a half. At two and ten, they might not get over it, but obviously, uh, Buccaneers, Patriots looking equally as bad this year, and the public continues to fade these bad teams with success, and they will do so again with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Kenny Pickett for the Steelers, very mediocre season as well, quarterback. In fact, uh, Pickett has only one touchdown pass in his past six games, one TD pass in his past six games, and only two DP two. Touchdown passes in his last eight games. You know, the Steelers always catch my as an underdog, and they've been a feisty dog this year. Overall, they're seven and four straight up and against the spread. Uh, but if you look at their recent games, their last seven games, they've gone five and two ATS, five and two straight up, but they've been a field goal favorite or less or a dog in every one of those games. So this is the biggest favorite they've been in a while. Definitely a step up. We'll see if the Cardinals can hang or not, but the public is also leaning towards Pittsburgh minus six and a half at one o'clock Eastern. All right, let's talk about that Sunday night game that I mentioned at 8 o'clock Eastern on NBC Sunday night. Uh, public is leaning towards the Kansas City Chiefs. 
not a surprise. Kansas City's a high-profile team, but uh, Green Bay has started to play a little bit better, including that upset of Detroit on Thanksgiving Day. And Green Bay's actually won three of their last four straight up and against the spread in their last three games. They've been a dog. So I was a little bit surprised that the public is fading them here, but it's hard to disagree. Kansas City looks like the superior team, and this line is probably a little bit cheaper than it would have been just a few weeks ago. Look ahead was as high as seven. It's now down to minus six, even five and a half in many locations. Uh, but the public is leaning towards the Chiefs minus six. Uh, obviously, Patrick Mahomes, a huge quarterback edge over Jordan Love. Um, Mahomes having a pretty good season. He's been inconsistent at times, uh, but still six touchdowns, only one interception in his last three outings. Jordan Love, though, is starting to play better, and that's another reason I was a little surprised the public was fading the Packers in this one. Uh, Love has a QB rating of 109 or higher in three of his last four starts, and those were the three games they won, of course. Uh, the one game they lost during that span against Pittsburgh was the one game in which Love did not play as well with two interceptions, uh, but he has played pretty well otherwise. Um, seven touchdowns the last three games, only those two picks, but the public doesn't care. They're fading the Green Bay Packers on Sunday night football. Uh, public leaning once again to Kansas City minus the six points. And then finally, uh, that one public underdog, I wanted to give you an additional lean as well, and that's on the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, this one, not quite as public as I thought it was going to be earlier in the week. I actually did a standalone video here on Wager Talk TV for this huge matchup. And I mentioned at the time that the public was going to probably come in on the Eagles. It's not as public as I thought it would be. I'm a little surprised uh, with San Francisco being a three-point road favorite that the public isn't heavy, heavy on the Eagles, a 10-1 and home underdog getting three points. How can that be? Well, I agree with the line here. I think San Francisco is the better team. And it's, of course, a huge rematch from the NFC Championship game last year in which Brock Purdy was injured early in the first quarter. Only had four pass attempts, could not return with the arm injury. And uh, that really was the difference in this game. Philadelphia dominated after that. Even though the game was still tied 7-7 mid-second quarter, uh, Philadelphia ran away with it after that. San Francisco just had no offense without Purdy in the lineup. That'll be different this year. And you do have to wonder if the Eagles are playing on borrowed time. This is a team that's come back from multiple double-digit deficits several weeks in a row now. Their last five straight-up wins they've trailed. And uh, this is a situation which maybe they're playing on borrowed time. But once again, 5-0 and straight up, 4-0 and 1 ATS their last five. Not a surprise that the public is leaning towards the Eagles. But once again, it's not as public as I thought it was going to be. We'll call it an additional lean. Uh, this is the one public dog this week. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles currently plus three. That kicks off at 425 Eastern on Sunday. All right, those are your seven plays and opinions for this week 13 NFL Pro Football, the most public sides on the board. Hey, look, the public's not always right, but the public's not always wrong either. We selectively choose our spots where to fade them. But keep in mind, back in week six, they went four and two, and they came back and went 0-7 in week seven. Last week, the public went three and one. Could we have another bad week for the public? We'll see. Seven plays on the board. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts, where you think they're right or where they're wrong, where you agree or disagree with these public sides. And also chime in with your other best bets. Throw in some analysis as well so we can learn and earn together here in week 13. And don't forget about those NFL teasers and player props as well. Always like to talk about those in the comments below. I read all the comments. I reply back. I love the support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for thumbs up, liking the videos. That helps keep everything free here on Wager Talk TV. And don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell for instant alerts. You know when this video goes live each and every week. It's usually up on Saturdays. And I also have solo standalone videos throughout the week for numerous NFL games. Also college and pro basketball games during the week. So hit subscribe, hit the bell for instant alerts. And don't forget, if you want my personal best bets for this Sunday pro football, I love this Sunday's card. 7-1 and one the last two Sundays. My best bets have gone 7-1 and one the last two Sundays in the NFL. And I love this Sunday's card. Check out my daily packages right now. Or if you're serious about making money, you really should consider one of the All Sports All Access special offers this weekend as it gets every play. College football, pro football, college basketball, pro basketball, every day and night. I have a three-day sampler, a 30-day, even a 365-day, which works out to just over $3 a day. You get that 30-day sampler. It works out to just over $8 a day. That gets you into January. gets you basically all the bowl games, NFL through the regular season, college and pro hoops every day. Number one in the NBA this year. I'm up over 120 units since January 1st, this calendar year in the NBA. Number one rankings in the past in college hoops. Off to a great start this year once again. And also number one college and pro football sides the past two years combined at Wager Talk. Check out my page right now for the special promo codes and offers along with daily free plays. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut WT. 
buzz slash sm. Follow me on Twitter as well for free plays and videos every day at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. And don't forget to also post free plays throughout the week on Instagram. I'm on IG. Who knew? Follow me, Merrill underscore Steve, and follow Wager Talk as well on IG. Best of luck here on Sunday, and be sure to check in on Wager Talk TV each and every day this week for great content. Enjoy the games. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you again soon.